east coast to the west coast, from the North Pole to the south. Finally, Friday is coming your way from the Major Spoilers Podcast Network. Thunder Howl Prime is there. As is Marshall Nesbitt. A couple of other people I see floating around who are very quiet at the moment. Chat is open. And we're ready to do a show. Finally, Friday is being brought to you this week by major spoilers of VIP and Patreon members from around the world. You can show your support for everything that we do at Major Spoilers and keep all of these great shows coming your way by pointing your browser to patreon.com slash major spoilers. Happy Friday to you all. I hope you've got uh, something good on your plate. Hopefully you're being saved. Let me just move that around just a little bit. I am so happy that you are here with us this Friday. Wherever you are in the world, I hope that you're being safe. I hope that you're being good. I hope you're washing your hands. Oh, let's see. That controls that. Interesting. There we go. Ha ha ha. Oh, look at all the people that are coming into the room. Look at Jay uh, Marshall Nesbitt being a... A nice person and welcoming Ace Deer and Ingrid and the one J Michael T and KB Bells and everybody into the chat. We've made it through another week. I know it's been hard. I know it's been difficult. I know many of you are working from home. I hope that means that you can come join us for Finally Friday. But a little bit of a little bit of spark, a little bit of hope coming our way. Uh, you know, here in Kansas. If we look at the uh we look at the numbers here. Let me shrink this up so you guys can see this. Yes, we have more counties reporting reporting uh, cases. One in Gove, which is two counties away from us. And then one in Ford, which that person is no longer in Ford as a transient case. Most of it in eastern Kansas, and it's starting to spread in eastern Kansas. But one little bit of hope. The, the blue line shows the growth of all total cases in this past week. You'll notice that the one today, for the update today, just dropped just a little bit. You know, it's not exponential here. It's just dropped slightly. And if you look at the green line, these are all the new cases. So there's actually fewer cases today than there were yesterday. And that's a good thing. Now, that's not always the case everywhere in the world. Italy is still having some issues. New York, California... I hope wherever you are, you are washing your hands and you're doing the proper social distancing. 1,900 new cases yesterday. Oof, ouch. Man, I hope you're doing okay. That's in New Jersey. Oof. I hope you guys are doing okay. I really think about all of you. And when I say you, I mean the royal you, not just you specifically. But I think about a lot of you and I hope that you are all doing well. I wish I could do something. To, uh, to make everything better. And maybe one thing I could do to make everything better is to get one Ashley Victoria Robinson to join in the chat. Hello, Ashley. Hello. How are you doing I today? very good at making sure that my laptop is powered up <laughs> when I start. This no, show. that's perfectly okay. We were just talking about uh, everybody <laughs> sheltering in place and Shh. all of those things. Hello, Jason. <laughs> well, they heard you. I got a question for you about inter Intern Brago. Sure. What does Intern Brago do when you or Jason are sick? Does he um, stay away from you or does he pay like extra attention to you? Yes, he definitely does. Why do you think that he, is? I think um, this is going to get real weird and real dark. I literally think because animals have such an exceptional sense of smell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think they can smell that there's something wrong with you. Um, and that's why I think that they attend to you because animals, just like humans, would attend to each other in the wild. And I think they're just there to make sure that you don't pass away. Oh, yeah. Mine was uh, all day today. You and I have both basically the same cat, orange, orange yes. cat. 
Uh, mine was all over me this morning. Usually he doesn't come up onto my lap, but this morning he jumped up on my lap and started kneading my lap and, you know, being all over me and everything. It's like, you usually don't do this this early in the morning. You usually do this at night. So I'm like, ooh, maybe he knows something that I don't. So, ooh. hope everything is going well with you. You're now at, into the end of your, what, first week or second week of uh, stay at home? Uh, it's like week and a half. Because we started a little earlier. Oh, right, right, right. Then the order. The order kind of began this week. Ah, uh, yeah. So. Okay, good. All right. Well, there's a couple of things that I want to share first. Feel free to comment. I know many of you love the Dungeons and the Dragons. And uh, many of you may have heard of this game uh, called Critical Role. I hear it's very popular on uh, YouTube. And people like that world that they have created. And uh, in stores now, if you can get to a store or have it delivered on Amazon, uh, I placed an order on Amazon and it said it wasn't going to be here until the end of April. It arrived today, so maybe you can get some stuff uh, early. Hey, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. It's, this is the new uh, source book for everything that goes on into that season of, of uh, Critical Role. So if you wanted to ever play in that, you've got this book right here to do that. Let me, let me just do this. Uh, let's go right here. Oh, Ashley, you're still on the picture. That's okay. I will I will move this around. Let's see if I meet if I do that. Oh, your audio goes away. So here's what I'll do. I'll just bounce you to the bottom. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. So this, hey. this book is really, really big. It's got a lot of pages in it, of course. It's got all the Oh, I didn't set this up. It's almost like Steven set this up like 30 minutes before the show began. <laughs> but Can't you can you, imagine? you can see all the fancy stuff that's in here. Nice pictures all sorts of descriptions. There's some maps. I was looking at some maps earlier. Uh, Wizards of the Coast sent me this last week and I didn't get a chance to share it. I wanted hey, thanks, to share Wizards it this of the week. Coast. Yeah, so if you're someone who, I mean, we talked about the uh, the PAX version. They had a source guide for their Penny Arcade one many, oh, many moons ago. And uh, we shared that and so I thought I'd share this one as well. This is the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount. Available now. The price on this on the back, it says, whoo, Canadians, 65 bucks for Canadians, 50 bucks for us Americans. Now, whoops, that's the wrong one. I want the guest because the guest is just as important. Now, if you're not, right. if you're not into source books and doing, and you like building your own world building things, I do have something that you will like because it's something I think every D&D player needs that's a set of dice. These are Laurel Silver Hands Explorers Kit. Cool. These were these also came out last week. I just got mine like the other day. So I want to show you these because these are pretty. These are some nice sparkling blue dice. I'm, I'm unboxing them here for you. These are nice. You you play some DMD, don't you, Ashley? Oh, yes, I do. What what do you like to play? What is your what is your class and race that you prefer to play? Mm, for a long time, I liked to play elves or half elf rangers mm -hmm. um, because if I was in Lord of the Rings, I want to be Arwen and Aragorn's daughter, <laughs> and that's who I wanted to play. Yeah. Uh, but now that I'm a grown person, I prefer to play halflings because I've accepted the fact that I'm just a hobbit in my heart. And I like to play either uh, sorcerers or mages because it's the closest thing I can get to being a witch, there which is go. like my, my other favorite thing. There you go. I'm just, I'm just trying to be what I want to be in real life. So this comes with uh, the box, besides, besides just the dice. It comes with this box that is felt lined, which it's also a dice rolling box. Actually, two dice roller boxes for you. So you get that in addition to what else comes with this thing. You get a map of, I think this is Waterdeep? Yeah, this is the uh, this is the Sword Coast. So you get a, a nice map of, of of the Sword Coast here, and then on the flip side, you have a map of Waterdeep. If you don't already have one of those, I think everybody has a map of Waterdeep, don't they? Uh, and I then I feel like yes. <laughs> so uh, apparently, Laurel is the uh, daughter of uh, she's the daughter of the goddess of magic. So. If you're going to go into her world and explore these things, there's also these cards. I don't know if these are going to be in focus, but they break down who all the player, who all these people are. Some beautiful art cards. There's so many of them. Look at all the art cards that you get, as well as location cards. 
You could take those art thing. cards and make a really nice. Um, oh yeah. Frame them, and make a really nice piece for your home. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's all sorts of information. There's something else here. I don't know what this is. I think this is just a nice little "Hey, welcome to the world" kind of thing. But you're you're right. You're right there, uh, Marshall. You can never have uh, too many dice. So That's I wanted true. to share that with you. I don't know what the are the uh, retail price is. This was available on March 17th. It's probably on the bottom of one of these boxes. And I'm going to dump out all the dice all over the place. The nice thing about that is it probably means that your local comic shops or your local game shops, if yep. they are doing any kind of delivery options, mm -hmm. uh, they probably have a few of those around. They probably do. Twenty four ninety five. So yeah, for they a might set be easier dice. to get your hands on. Yeah, than comics. Twenty four ninety five for all of this. I mean, this is a pretty good deal That's because not bad at all. you have what you have. Uh, what do we have here? We have two. D20s. We have a D8, one D6. Uh, we've got four D6s. We've got a D4, D10. Or I'm sorry, what is that? A D. Yeah, that's a. What are these? The percentage dice, and then a D12. So you get plenty of you get plenty of dice in this thing. Look at that. Shake them around. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, so it might be a good idea to go to your local shop if they're doing any kind of curbside delivery right now and pick up some of these. I know many game stores are probably doing the same thing, figuring out what they're going to do during the uh, COVID uh, outbreak with the orders to shut down. I went to our Ace uh, hardware store today because uh, I had to go into, I had to break into my work because we're not supposed to be there. But as I was coming out, there was this beautiful cardinal on my truck just tweeting away, being happy about it. And my youngest was with me because I figure if the cops show up, they're not going to arrest me with my kid there. <laughs> I mean, that's a good play. I mean, that's, you know. I'm hey, not advocating that. for it, but it's a, it's a good play. <laughs> but he was like, oh, the, you know, I've seen birds around our house. So we ended up going to um, Ace to go get a bird feeder and all sorts of things. And um, and I was I'm very pleased. Everyone's being very good about the number of people they allow into the store, not touching the cash cashier, the cash register area, mm -hmm. you know, with extra boxes and all those kinds of things. So your local game store might be doing something like that, or your comic book store might be doing something like that. So if you can pick up some of these things to keep you company over the break, you can certainly do that. If you don't like physical stuff, I mean, the dice really, as, Mar as Marshall said, you can never have enough dice. Get as many dice as you can. Uh, but if you don't like those physical books, they do have these available on, I believe Roll20 has everything in there. And what is the... D&D Beyond, is that what the the online version of the Dungeons & Dragons thing is? I, for, I think that's what it is. They also have the um, Critical Role source book right there for you as well. So you can go check those kinds of things out. Looks very interesting. Um, so what's your, what is the favorite campaign that you've ever done, Ashley, in, in the Dungeons & Dragons? Oh, man. Do you most, um, mo were, most of your games centered around, like, hobbits and... Middle Earth kind most, of stuff? Or? Most of them are. The last two that I did, we did the Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. 20, Sh Shadow Run or whatever it is. 2019. Like the one that we did, we did it like the year it happened. Oh, 2020 right, okay. or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. The one that's from like the 80s where you have to like hack and there's oh, a different yeah, yeah, yeah. mode for it. And yeah. you get like the fax, the mobile fax machine. <laughs> um, And then I just, uh, we were playing a Star Trek one where I was oh, a Vulcan yeah. because of Vulcan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now is that the was that them, the Modifius one, the, the Star Trek yeah. one? Yeah, yeah. Cool. I wanted to play is, that one. I okay, so I'm very bad at games. <laughs> so for me, learning a new engine is really, really hard. Like if it's anything more advanced than the Pathfinder engine, I'm just like, ah, what's the heck? like? I need to be told like yeah. for probably the first three or four rounds, yeah. like like days of play to be like, no, this is how you do it, stupid. Um, so I found it hard, but I'm sure if your if your brain just works more like that than mine, it's not too bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, most of the ones that I played, I like uh, high fantasy is like my favorite storytelling form. So mm -hmm. those most of my D and D experience has been that, and the best campaign I ever played was in. Uh, 2009 to 2010, I remember it so vividly, uh, right before I moved to the States, I'd just done a production of Peter Pan. Uh -huh. And so it was a bunch of like 20-something uh, actors 
who and like late teens actors who were all like uh this will be fun and there was like they cut the math down to like an absolute minimum oh cool uh and my character i just made her kind of as vicious as possible and my solution was usually can we throw a fire spell at it like <laughs> i just i loved it so much i like i like to um i like to take the approach of uh, I want to mess stuff up in the world of the game, so I'm probably not a fun person to play with. <laughs> so you're a chaotic person? Yeah, yeah. Because it's not who I am in real life. I'm, like, very organized and regimented. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I think there's a couple of games that you might enjoy playing if you're, uh, especially with rule set. I have been very pleased with Fate. Fate is a very easy system to learn. Me typing notes. Yeah. Uh, it, is, it, is so, it is so easy to learn. It is, there's not a lot of rules to it. Um, you have a couple of um, things that can help give you bonuses on your rolls. Uh, but for the most part, it's just very much story-driven uh, gameplay. It's really, really fun. And then that another, sounds like my jam. And then another one that is super easy is Fiasco. And yeah. Fiasco is straight-up story-driven, but, um, you know, at the end of each scene that you have, you can either... Uh, everyone else decides whether you, the person who's the star of that scene, whether you succeeded or you failed, and they give you a number of dice. And these number of dice don't affect future scenes with you or anything. They all add up at the end to see how you how you survived or how you didn't survive at the end of the game, at the end of the at the end of the story. We did one a couple of oh, it was like last year, I want to say, on uh, Critical Hit. And it was a lot of fun. We did a whole kind of cowboy bebop, uh, robbing a casino, uh, space casino kind of thing. That was really fun. So people should go check that out. It's called this Fiasco. It's also me downloading the episodes. Oh, there you go. To yeah. listen to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ingrid says, I've got Fate, Atomic Robo. Haven't had a chance to play. My gaming group is currently stuck in D&D. &D. That's fine. I've got Fate, Atomic Robo 2, and I haven't had a chance to play that. Uh, let's see. Um, I just ran Dungeon World for some clients today, says uh, Chris... Uh, uh, Rondu, I don't know how you say your last name, Chris. I have really actually enjoyed watching how people are gaming in mm -hmm. this weird new world that we oh, live no, in. I know, right? It's, and it's it's cool, and it feels like everyone's just doing what you've been doing with Critical Hit. I know, right? It's, uh, it's for, funny for like because a years. we, I mean, my setup is completely different. In fact, I'm mean, going to give everybody a heads up. If you have not become a patron at patreon.com slash major spoilers, we have an exclusive show that we are doing there. It's a monthly show called the GM Roundtable, where we sit around and we talk about, um, you know, how to build build a world, how to make sure characters are, are playing along with one another. What do you need to do to be a better GM at the table? And coming up in April, we, our uh, next show will be all about how do you take your game online, especially at a time when everyone is stuck at home and you're not able to get with your normal gaming group. It's super, That's super so easy. Fun. And what's really funny about this is we've been using Roll20 for a yeah. couple of years. Jason's playing the old air guitar back he's, there. He's having a great time <laughs> in the background. Uh, what's, what's funny is we've been using Roll20 for, for a long time now, but it's only taken a pandemic for everyone to suddenly realize that, oh, there's this thing called Roll20 that you can use to play Dungeons & Dragons with. So, yeah, tell Jason to go to the other room. Tell him to go to work. Yeah, he's got, well... I don't think they start for like another 15 oh, minutes. Okay. All right. And let me tell you, these TV writers, they don't like to start early. No, they don't, huh? Oh, man, they are starting way late in the afternoon, right? Because it's like yeah. 2 o'clock there. Yeah. Wow. Well, next week will be very interesting because not only do I go back Movie. to teaching uh, to teaching uh, virtually, mm -hmm. but the boys go back to school virtually. So that's going to be interesting to juggle all of those things uh, going on right now. I can't wait to see how your bandwidth deals with it. It's, it's pretty good because this It'll week be this week would have been the toughest week for bandwidth because not only am I doing all the things that we're doing at Major Spoilers and video and stuff that I'm video recording and, and uploading, and, et cetera. You know, they've been doing nothing but Animal Crossing and watching, like, these kids. I don't know how they do it. They've got both their iPads going watching YouTube videos, playing their Animal Crossing, and they're watching a movie on... TV and all this stuff is all through the internet. So we've been fine with bandwidth so far. Do you know what they name their island? No. Because that's like the big, everyone, the day Animal Crossing happened, everyone was like melting down being like, what do I call my island? I know the oldest has an orange island. He went with orange. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know what the youngest went with. I think he, I he must have also until, gone with an orange island. I thought until um, Wednesday, 
that you could only start with like peach or cherry, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, pear or cherry trees mm -hmm. because those were the only ones that I'd seen. But apparently, there's like truly a whole world of fruit available. Yeah, I guess so. And, and last night it was last night it was so funny watching them because um, it was like 6:30 and the youngest hadn't taken his bath yet. And I was like, mm -hmm. dude, you need to go take a bath because you're stinking because we actually been getting out and doing some exercise. Um, yes. But he's like, but dad, I can't. And I'm like, why not? He goes, because it's seven o'clock. Apparently it starts raining or something. And then all these islands come out that people can get. And they were hoping to get a tarantula island. They already got a butterfly island, apparently. And so they were just like, dad, I can't take a shower right now because I got it. And I'm like, you got 30 minutes. You can go hurry up and do this. So. Um, they are just loving the Animal Crossing, and I might start to play it. I don't know. I saw your post yesterday where you were like, when am I going to play Animal Crossing? And I yeah. was like, I think I wrote like, never. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. So how are you coping with working from home, Ashley? I know uh, maybe coming up in a week or so, you may have some tips on working from home. But what are you doing right now for working from home? I think I'm pretty fortunate because I work from home a lot mm -hmm. anyway. So... The thing that I find more upsetting during this time is like not having the choice. Yeah. Uh, because I don't like to leave my home to begin <laughs> with. Um, but knowing that I could, you know, like robbing me of that choice yeah. is I think the thing that's like weirdly most, which is a whole other weird like existential conversation. But I'm trying to cope with, I set the goal of trying to read every book in my house. Yeah. Because I own a lot of books. Well, that'll that take I you, a, never... that'll, that'll cover you through this entire <laughs> crisis for the next 18 months. Yep. Um, I'm also trying to, and I think everyone is doing this, but it's also hard given the mental health sort of states and discussions that to be had. I'm trying to deal with it by being, um, as productive as possible, which is pretty unique for people like you and I, Right. like I can take this opportunity to like make videos or, uh, this week on, um, our individual Patreon, we started our blackest nightclub oh, series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... That's going to be 10 individual videos, and now we're up to video six. Nice. So trying to do that, and then right before COVID happened, we started watching all the James Bond movies, so I'm really just watching more James Bond than I ever so, thought. So let's see. So have you had a chance to watch all the James Bond films? Have you watched them all yet? Um, Last night, we watched... Jason, what's the last year's Bond movie we watched? Die Another Day. Oh, Die Another Day. <laughs> so, okay. All right. So which is the last Pierce Brosnan. So now yeah. I've watched all of them. Okay. All right. And so do you have a favorite right now? My favorite before was, and I think, um, you know, barring whoever might come along in the future, always will be Daniel Craig. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, I think the Connery movies hold up way way better yes. than i expected especially the way and early ones the early like the first five hello intern Brego. Uh, from russia with love is yeah. like very very good this is intern Brego, who the background is trying to blur out um <laughs> and as a daniel craig fan you can really see what he steals from sean connery because a lot of the stuff that connery does is what we like about daniel craig which right. has been very interesting to me um but ultimately i've come to the conclusion that I could rank them in order of like my preference and who I think James Bond is and all that. But right. I don't think any of them, even the ones I like the least, I don't think any of them are bad. No, I think but, they're all, well, what's the one uh, with the guy with the exploding diamonds in his face? Uh, that was Bond oh, 20. I think. Uh, is that Bond 20? Yes, that's Die Another Day. That's the one I oh, just okay. watched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I, that or one is one that I was just like, eh. Batman and Robin movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just kind of in on that one. I just mean the actors. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think, um, like, I don't really go for the sillier bonds. So, like, Pierce Brosnan and Roger Moore are probably, um, I'd rank them, like, lower on my list. But when you watch the movies, it's interesting to be like, oh, they hired this person because he has X quality that James mm -hmm. Bond has. And mm -hmm. I, I found that really interesting. Yeah. But, like, some of them are, some of the movies are very bad. <laughs> well, you you got to admit, the, the best one, though, uh, uh, out of all of them is Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Uh, you know, I don't mind Honor Madison's Secret Service. <laughs> I, for whatever, and, uh, that is my favorite one of all time. If you like Inception and you've never seen Honor Majesty's Secret Service, yes. the whole dream level where they are in the snow is just lifted. Yeah. It's the exact same structure. Like, yeah. that was the creep. I, I, the whole movie, I was like, this is Inception. Yeah. 
This is like fully inception. Yeah. I would I still I, I still have to go on Her Majesty's Secret Service is my favorite one. Then <laughs> Skyfall is number two. Yeah. And then the first um Casino Royale not the first Casino Royale, the second Casino Royale, the Daniel Craig yes, Casino the first Royale. Daniel Craig. And then um Man, I really like Doctor No. Doctor No like is Dr. really no. is really another one of my favorites. Those are those are my top four James Bond movies. Doctor No, you just kind of have to go. Yeah, but a Jewish guy plays an Asian guy, yeah. but it was the 1960s, yeah. so we're sorry. You do have to overlook the yeah. the not casual racism, the overt racism yeah. in that, especially when he yeah. is created as a Yellow Peril character. Uh, but yeah. still, just in the way that that story is told and everything that's going on there, it is really good for the very first James Bond movie. That movie is shockingly good. And there are so many pieces in place. Like, everyone likes to credit Goldfinger with mm -hmm. being the one that becomes James. And it, it definitely is. But yeah. Dr. No has a lot of the qualities of a classic James Bond mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a time when, I forget if it was TBS or TNT, this is when I lived in Atlanta, that over the New Year, you know, the Christmas to New Year holiday... Mm -hmm. uh, they would run all of the James Bond movies back to back to back to back, nonstop. So not even repeats. It's just the weekend of Bond. And they would start on Friday and would go all the way until Sunday night. And I remember sitting up sometimes at like 2, 3 in the morning to watch yeah. like Thunderball. And it was Thunderball just... Thunderball is really good except for all the boring parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the Star Trek TMP of that franchise. Mm -hmm. But it was it was so good. Every year I just would be like, okay, this weekend is James Bond weekend. I'm doing nothing but watching James Bond. And then so, after I moved, I I never watched James Bond for a long time. If people want to do something like that, there's a free app. It's called Pluto TV. Mm -hmm. Pluto like the planet. Yeah. And it is like a scrolling, like there's channels that are themed, but they oh. also have movie rentals and they have every Bond movie, uh, not including Brosnan and Craig. Oh, okay. So you can get all the way up to... Uh, What's the second Dalton movie? License to Kill. Oh, yeah, where he's sliding down the mountain. Is that the one? Yeah. yeah in the uh, cello case. But yeah, my hot take is that Timothy Dalton is a very good James Bond, and I tweeted that, and people are like... Oh, hating on you for very that? Very polarized. <laughs> yeah, so it. here's the problem. The but in Timothy it, Dalton... Brian Emmett slid in there and like defended me, so I felt good about myself. Here's, here's the problem. Timothy Dalton is a fine James Bond, except he came after Roger Moore... When yeah. everyone still thought that Roger Moore, uh, that James Bond had to be cheeky and had to be funny. Yeah. And so they tried yeah. to insert too much uh, comedy into the, those James Bond movies at a time when what audiences really wanted was blowing up stuff. License to Kill is also funny to watch because Benicio Del Toro is like 20. Oh, yeah, I forgot that he's in that. And he plays a mook in it. And uh, it looks like a boy I dated in high school. So wow. I highly recommend watching it just for that. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, I just, uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen some of those. I, you know, I skip them over. I even, I, I think I like Quantum of Solace uh, even more than I like a lot of the Brosnan or uh, Dalton James Bond movies. Um, I like, I mean, I like all the Craig ones. And when I sit down to watch them, I'm always like, yeah, we'll watch Quantum of Solace and when you know that it was created during the last writer's strike, like yeah. it's astonishing that that thing exists at all. Yeah. But that's, so that's been a lot of what I've done. So in I'm quarantine. guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing there must be an upcoming geek history lesson on James Bond. Uh, it's funny. So we, we plan, we started a couple years ago planning geek history lesson for the entire year because mm -hmm. typically, uh, you kind of know, okay. Uh, the Arrowverse shows are going to end around this time. Right. Um, we know the whole slate of movies that's coming out. So like we can do a lot of planning mm -hmm. and then we have a couple weeks where we'll leave blank and as announcements come out or new or Netflix drops new content, uh, we'll, we'll piece things in there or we'll go back and we, we have a document where we have like fan suggestions and things like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so we have the whole year planned out and then COVID happened. Yeah. So not this coming week, but the next week, which is the same week um, that No Time to Die was scheduled to come out. We were going to do like a four week bond. Nice. Nice. But. Yeah, I know. Here's here's just so people can. Happen. So people can see some behind the scenes stuff. We're just like geek history lesson. Here's our yeah. here's our major spoilers rundown of all the stuff that we're doing this year. Uh, everything in blue is stuff that we 
uh, are, are getting up to, and then in black are all the things that we've done, and the stuff in red is things that we had not gotten access to yet, although uh, I will say for the My Hero Academia stuff, uh, Viz Media has has come through and said, yeah, we, we can give you access to all that stuff. So. They've been so good to us, yeah. so like big props to Viz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I will tease that, so because um, we record in advance, mm -hmm. we like to... Because we can, because oh, yeah. we don't do news. Yeah, you don't do any um, stuff that's current, relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we are going to release one James Bond episode, and then we're holding the rest for hopefully November slash whenever else it gets it gets uh, moved to. Yeah. But also, I mean, I don't know if you had any plans to change this, but we started doing last year like book club episodes, and so our next book club episode was going to be a Black Widow tie-in. And oh, yeah. I... Now, now we're like... Do we I, move it? <laughs> I pretty much just had everything, you know, once it's set, I pretty much leave things the way they are because I don't want to throw yeah. things off too much because I know some people like you uh, went through and read all of uh, uh, Haro County, yeah, I you sure know, did. before everyone else. And it's like, well, you know, if we dump Haro <laughs> County, then that means Ashley, you know, granted, she's read some good comics, but that's extra work that now has been tossed good away. Point. So I try to Look, once I've we read, have it I've set. Read... I've read the next two volumes of Pretty Deadly. So. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So we've got that going for us too. So that's... even though uh, I think I was like the voice of dissent in this week's episode. I mean, you know, that gives you everybody a little behind the scenes. If you can plan ahead like that, certainly do. Uh, if you're a podcaster, so there's some tips for you. But uh, it's also a little bit tougher for you, Stephen, because you know you're dealing with 15 people, like mm -hmm. all said for all the shows. Mm -hmm. You know, for Geek History Lesson, it's mostly just. Me and Jason, and right. we're self-quarantined yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Well, and then the <laughs> nice thing is, you know, as I talked with our VIP members this past Saturday, uh, Brian is now, uh, I mean, he's not quarantined at home, but we've got it to where he can play remotely now. And so nice. I am the only person, you know, everybody, we don't have to worry if, you know, somebody can't make it to someone else's house because of shutdowns or quarantines or anything like that, because everyone is now in their home playing. So we've got that going for us. And we do, we record like two or three episodes uh, per session for every time we yeah. sit down. And so that does give us some buffer and it gives us the buffer then to say, okay, this week is a skip week. For example, this week was a skip week for everybody because uh, uh, Brian had a birthday and wanted to do something for his birthday. And then um, we also have a week where we can do the GM roundtable. So basically in a month, in two weeks, we will record six weeks worth of episodes. So that gives us a buffer of roughly two Although we have at times been recording an episode and then it has to come out that Friday. Uh, so, I mean, us too, sometimes that just happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the but furthest that's... we've been out has been at one time we were three months ahead of everything. Yeah, that was that was pretty amazing back in the day when we had free time. That's one of the most interesting things I think that's kind of come out of the current state of affairs is people who are new media and who are like lean and mean, like... Mm -hmm. You know, major spoilers is mostly just Steven. Yeah. And I mean, uh, I rely on all of my my great talented writers like but, Ashley but you're and the, Ingrid. You're and... the you're the wizard. You're the man behind the curtain. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, and like like Jawin is just Jason and I. Right. So, you know, when you're that stripped down, like we're still able to keep, you know, kind of keep the engines going. Whereas yeah. like studios or uh, bigger channels aren't. And. Mm -hmm. That's been kind of crazy to like watch what industries and what type of content is booming at this time and what, you know, like entertainment, like 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 television, like uh, the Arrowverse is going to have to stop airing episodes after this week. Yeah. And that's just the reality of how that content is made. I think that's been very interesting. Yeah. And, and even, um, you know, streaming channels, um, you know, they have to they've had to make changes, too, because maybe they can't all meet together in a location to record their show on a weekly basis or some people still yep. are i guess and i'm still kind of like really okay um but yeah well it is i mean for a lot of people it is up to your own discretion so yeah that's true yeah. And, and and apparently in california podcasting is an essential business so <laughs> that's i'm not joking that is literally well, true cannabis that is, cannabis is as well so yeah so you, that's all you need to know about california you have a you have permission to go to work and podcast and if you have to travel for a podcast, you're free to do that because the governor has said podcast is an essential business. Now, the one thing that the governor hasn't done that I have uh, kind of been hinting to people uh, that have more money and, and influence than me is 
hey, maybe you could lift that freelancer cap that was put on by AB5 because that is one thing that's killing freelancers right now. So anybody within the sound of my voice, if you can contact uh, your California representative and tell them to remove the freelancer cap for AB5 right now, that would be wonderful. In fact, just remove it completely because yeah. as people are being laid off, freelance becomes more important. And if they can't do more than 35, then they're going to be screwed in that way. So yeah, Gavin it, Newsom, listen up. I, I wish they, I really wish so. that, the, I mean, that would be one good thing that would come out of this. If they're going to make podcasting an essential uh, a business, then certainly lift the cap of freelancers on AB5. So hopefully that'll happen in the next week or so. I really hope so. There was a rumor right before this whole business went down that it was going to be uh, nixed in the next couple of weeks. So my hope is that th someone just goes, yeah, 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 this is fine. Get rid of it. And yeah. Like, wait, hand, hand wave it away. away. That'd be great. Yeah. So yeah. I wonder, though, um, are your guys out of session? Are they on recess right now? Because in I Kansas, think, I don't I mean, in Kansas, yes they, and no. they meet from like uh, January through I want to say the end of March or April. And then that's it for the year. So I didn't know how California was that way or, or not. I'm going to be honest. I don't really know. <laughs> Got to get involved, Ashley. Know. Run for your local local councilman. Councilwoman Ashley Victoria Robinson. Absolutely not. <laughs> no? no, thank you. No, you don't I want to do not that? want to be in politics. Uh, no. Okay. Nope. Well, they probably wouldn't let you anyway, right? Uh, I think I could do. I mean, you could do. I mean, you could do. Become governor. You could do everything except president. Yeah, you could become governor very easily. Look at uh, Arnold at home with his donkey and his pony. No, thank you. <laughs> Ashley, I have where, enough people telling me I'm terrible. I don't need to invite that. <laughs> where can f people find all of your wonderful stuff, Ashley? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley B. Robinson. The B is very important. Uh, Geek History Lesson is part of the Major Spoilers podcast feed. So why don't you just go ahead and subscribe uh, to all of that amazing content. Cause it's got even more than just me on it. There you go. And uh, please, uh, if you are desperate for something to read in your local comic shop, or Amazon won't ship you books. You can buy any books that are written by Jason Inman or myself if you go to jasoninman.com slash store and we disinfect everything before we send it. There you go. Also, uh, are you still going to continue your Tolkien readings or was that just the one day? Uh, I just did that for Tolkien reading day. Okay. But, you know, Stephen and I are talking about maybe doing it again. Yeah, it was really good. So you need to follow Ashley on her Instagram and on Twitter. So the next time she does a, an Ashley Live, which is usually about, what, 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, Pacific yeah. time. Mm -hmm. So go check her out there and you can say all sorts of wonderful things to her. And here's all the wonderful things I'm going to say to everyone else. Please stay safe. Please stay at home. Please wash your hands. Please be good to one another. And we'll get through this and we will talk with you next week when it's finally Friday. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Ashley, for being here this week. We'll talk Yay. with everyone again soon.